G'day scrappers, welcome to another video. Today I'm depopulating some boards. I've got a, uh, quite a stockpile of boards that need to be depopulated, so um, I better get onto this before it just gets uh, way out of hand. I've already got a couple of days worth of work here just in depopulating, so yeah, got to get onto it. So I thought I'd um, make a bit of a start today. And uh, just to uh, refresh people, um, what I do when I'm depopulating and how I'm thinking uh, when I'm doing it, there's uh, different types of uh, depopulating. Obviously, for the guys that are just going for straight out gold recovery, they're not selling their boards. Uh, you're pretty much depopulating everything and it's just a matter of sorting everything out into the right categories you know so you put your mlc somewhere your tantalum capacitors your chips um and all that kind of thing so uh but for me uh i sort of try and work out what i depopulate completely what i partially depopulate and then just what I, you know, some boards I might just take off one or two little things and try not to devalue. Because once you start depopulating a board, you're, you're devaluing it as, and you're dropping the grade down. Like this here, this is, would be considered a telecom grade board. And as you can see, um, it does have a bit of rubbish on the top here. Um, but pr predominantly, it's all chips. So this is a telecom grade board. Now with me, I buy telecom grade boards, but I don't sell them. I, I usually bring them down to a server grade board. So that's just by removing a few little chips. And each board is different. And uh, so I, what I recommend for people that are, are selling me boards is to be, you know, try not to uh, get too carried away when you go to depopulate boards because um, you really can devalue stuff and not only you know possibly bring this down to server grade board but you can bring this way down to a mid-grade board um, especially this is only single layer ports if they're double layer ports and depending on what they're made of they can be really heavy and really um you know take up probably 40 percent of the weight of the whole board so once you start taking off chips you can um, possibly remove it down to uh, a mid-grade board so be very careful if you're selling to me um, i recommend you know wherever you are if you're selling boards as scrap um, you know try and understand your buyer and what they're buying and what they're looking for because uh yeah if you start depopulating and sending in those boards you might be in for a bit of a surprise especially if you're shipping it um you're paying shipping costs and all that sort of stuff so um you can end up losing money um because um obviously once you get down to mid-grade board or peripheral board in the states it's not even worth shipping and always keep in mind that these kind of pulse chips up the top here usually very always um, at the top next to the ports they're not ic chips they're really thick and heavy they're actually got little copper coils inside so these don't count so all this part here is what we consider as rubbish um, so any board buyer would you know straight away doesn't even take this part into account as far as value apart from being low value um, so it's all about this kind of stuff here so okay so what i'm going to do here right well for me i want to bring this try and bring this down to a server grade board uh, so what i can see here is the best things here for me are the cisco gold corner bgas so there's one two three four five of them so that's what i'm going to go for and uh all I do is just try and use a flat screwdriver and when you kind of you kind of got to be careful when you're popping these uh, a, a lot of times this top part will crack and so sometimes they fly out all over the place so I try and be careful and obviously these are what you want to keep as well uh, uh, most of the time a lot of the gold 
most of the gold can be in them. So they're just uh, gold corner BGAs in this particular one. So there you go, the whole lot has been removed and we also take this part here uh, which is also has some gold plating here so uh, yep, no problem there. Alright, and so now we're, we're, you know, as you can see straight away that's very obvious that it's been removed so a board buyer will say yep, I can see this one has been removed. Um, sometimes people will try and remove the heat sink and sometimes the whole BGA can come off with the heat sink so here we only lost a little bit here um, and uh, yeah so that's all uh, I'm going to do and so I already made the decision to take off all the BGAs so we'll just continue that yeah that's the only thing some of these are so thin that they crack and then they just fly everywhere and uh, sometimes months later you'll find a little little black chip <laughs> and you think oh yeah that was the only one that sort of came off nicely and so there we go gold corner bga one of the highest you know value grade um, ic's or chips that we can get so these you know you're looking at anywhere between four and eight grams of gold per kilogram um, or roughly a, anywhere between uh, two and four grams per pound okay so there we go so now we've removed the the five bgas and that's obvious but now what we've done is we've brought this down to um server grade now this would no longer go as telecom grade because yeah obviously we've taken off the chips but still it's a really good server grade board and in this case could even probably pinch a couple of other things um, only in this case so what i probably do is take one of the flat packs and so when you want to take one of the flat packs off you look for the best kind possible you know it's hard to know unless you're actually opening them up but here you can see here these are all called level one ICs so I'm not really sure about these but this one here this is the IBM Power PC chip so it's it's like a CPU pretty much uh, so the chances are this one would have um, the best goal recovery and so this is the one I take and I just put these with regular flat packs so just uh, can be pretty much anything what I call flat packs um, are four-sided IC chips legs on four sides we put them I keep them you know separate as opposed to uh, your regular dip IC chip so this has got just legs on two sides so we just keep them separate um, but there you go so here now we've got still got a really good server grade board so i might take a couple of these ic's okay so you know just a couple of ic's and i'm happy there uh it's still a good board for them uh, i might even pinch uh, these memory chips along the side i'll I, you know i'll just take one so all i do is i use a, a sharp little flathead screwdriver and just want to run along one side and then you can just jiggle it off and there we go a memory style ic chip i keep the memory ic chips uh, these ones separate and then obviously you've got bga chips which uh you know so your memory bga chips i keep them separate um these are really high quality ones um highest uh, gold recovery because they don't have the extra plastic from the gold corner I, um bgas so i keep these separate all right so i'm happy with that so this will go to server grade boards um, i've uh, just got a, a new camera, I've got a new GoPro Hero 9 
and so I'm just t testing it out at the moment I'm testing um, what it's like with the media mod uh, that I'm using and I, I'm not using an external microphone a lapel mic I'm actually just using the microphone on the um, media mod so I'm just testing it out so hopefully it works out well so here we go we got a uh, PCI card a slot card whatever you want to call them um, that's what we just we just call them slot cards because they got gold fingers slots um as uh because we're scrappers we're not <laughs> it techs so here um this is uh for me is just too good for to send off as a slot card to sell as a slot card um so i'm looking at depopulating this and so i've got two options once again i can take a few things off and still keep it as a slot card but this particular one um you know and and the other option is i can actually take the gold fingers off take a couple of the chips take off this bracket and still get a mid-grade board for it uh, but it, this one in particular it's just got too many good things on it it's just too really you know too good yeah, it's got a huge bga here another one here one of these uh double chip ones and then a, uh, a higher grade BGA here with no gold corner no excess plastic so three BGA straight off the top then we've got three gold band crystal oscillators and as I tell people you know the gold band crystal oscillators are as good as almost any C uh, ceramic CPU they're very much the same as a ceramic CPU inside so under this gold um, uh, gold edged um, little uh, top there you got your ceramic underneath so the first thing I, I will do is I'll just uh, use a a large flat screwdriver push it against it and then just uh, and just twist it from right to left and they usually pop off quite nicely sometimes the ceramic will crush underneath and you'll have most of the ceramic and the bonding wires, the gold bonding wires still stuck on a board. So go again and really push that off. And you, I usually just use, uh, let it stick to my finger and then tip it into the gold band crystal oscillators. So because the ceramic is what it, where it's all at, the caps, sometimes the caps will pop off and you'll still have the ceramic on there. The caps really aren't that you know crash hot but i still put it all in together so there we go so you can see the ceramic underneath and the gold caps and these uh well they are high grade high value but uh you know you only get one or two every you know off off a board a lot of boards don't have them so it does take a quite a long time to get a kilo of them and uh but certainly good value so okay so as I said, um, I might as well just depopulate everything off this board. And so I'll get this very flat, flat pack. So in this case, I usually skim along three sides, pop it up and peel it off. So it's a very thin one, but it's still a flat pack. Good. Might as well get the... Uh, the bigger flat packs off so these ones i just use one of these monkey grip things i find them the, find it the quickest you just sort of jiggle it around and they pop straight off nice one there and then this little one here so this board here where we're completely depopulating so it's not going to be going off as scrap okay so i'll get my three main bgas Okay, so once again, cracks, but as most people say, this is the most important um, part of it, the top. Um, a lot of times I don't see any gold, apparently it's microscopic, <laughs> but um, there definitely is gold on the base as well. So we keep this together. These, these double ones are quite interesting. Um, So there's two BGAs on this. 
you can see there's a gap there most of the time there's another small BGA on the top there uh, but these are really good and the higher grade BGA with no gold corner um, sorry I just had to I've just got to make a few adjustments to the camera because the screen is uh, turning off I haven't got it set properly it's turning off too quickly all right so now obviously this is not even going to go as a mid-grade board because we've just taken off way too much so we've got to go all the way now uh, the two memory IC chips pretty straightforward there's another one there little flat pack pry that off and these I don't these don't go into memory IC chips they just go into regular IC chips because I try and keep the memory IC chips very uniform although they look similar they're not quite they've actually got um, their legs on the the um, outsides rather than along the the, the top all right, so now, a uh, couple of things left. Obviously, really, really high grade gold fingers here. So this is a very important tool in scrapping. Probably, uh, aside from your side cutters, which would be the number one, um, and your cordless screwdriver number two this is number three and number four would be a thin bladed flat screwdriver okay so these gold fingers um, yeah good quality you can see a, quite a bit of green still um, this one here I can I want to trim off that excess green try not to trim too much so you don't want to lose any gold just to keep it higher higher grade and uh, this one I won't really worry about so there we go some gold fingers adds to the pile and so what do we got left here so we've got some MLCC's whether they're good quality MLCC's or not uh, we'll work that out another day we'll just put these with uh, our standard MLCC's so as you can see, depopulating boards is another time-consuming thing. Um, you know, obviously I can do it a lot quicker if I'm not doing it on video, but it still is a, a time-consuming thing, and it just... Uh, there we go, all our little MLCCs, just in the regular batch. So you've got to weigh up, you know, if you're in this to uh, for um, purely for goal recovery, then... Well, this is what you've got to do, but if you're in this for scrapping and trying to make money out of your scrap, um, a lot of times, unless they're super boards or really good boards like this where you can depopulate everything, a lot of times it can be, um, you're probably better off just, if, you, if you've got a market to sell, sell your boards. Um, okay, so, uh, I don't see anything else, this, yeah can't really yeah it, some kind of it might be a I think it is a capacitor but I don't know don't I'm not going to worry about that tiny little IC chip here well we might as well get it since we're here and um, everything else yeah well these are capacitors they're probably tantalum capacitors well they are capacitors so they would have to be if you're not sure and there's enough of them on the board you know you could just sort of snap into them and try and see if there's a little yeah probably is I'm not going to worry about it okay so I'm happy there I've totally devalued it got a few MLCC's on the back 
uh, and some you know a few little rows sometimes I try and be careful because you can you can get a lot of resistors in amongst the little MLC's and so I just tip these straight into the to the tub so you don't really want a mix of resistors but then again um, you know if you're going for silver recovery then well you you'll get some silver out of the resistors anyway you just won't you definitely won't get palladium but not that palladium is in every MLCC anyway so you can skim around a little bit and get your little your little uh, tiny little MLCC crumble all right okay I'm happy there so I've skimmed off most um, yeah, and well, nothing there for me. It's just a uh, a female plug. There are some gold pins here. They're pretty good gold pins. So in this case, we we can try and get this off. This one probably really needs to be um, run through with the air hammer. Sometimes they can come off, but this one's going to be a bit difficult. So I'll just leave that for now. So there we go. We might as well just throw this. Now, this is not no longer any grade board. It's not even a, a low grade. Technically, it is low grade. You've still got base metal tin and and uh, mostly and probably uh, aluminium and, and, and things like that. But uh, yeah, most buyers don't really want to buy these as low grade. It's pretty much just rubbish now, so you might as well just, you know, it's still got metals, steel, so you might as well just throw this into dirty pressing. Well, an abrupt interruption, uh, but it gave me a chance to just uh, check how the uh, video and this new camera is going. Um, uh, not really uh, impressed with the actual microphone. Uh, the inbuilt microphone, so, oh well, what do we do? So here, uh, well, it kind of looks like a slot card, but it's not, doesn't have gold fingers on this, so basically, um, hard to kind of grade this board. It is a high-ish grade board, but it would kind of just go um, either, it, it could go like as a, a mother grade board, that kind of rating, it's just hard to sort of grade these kind of boards because they're a little bit too high for mid-grade. Um, an absolute giant AMD uh, BGA here that I really want. So uh, a gold band crystal oscillator, a couple of tantalum capacitors, and so a couple more at the back here. So we'll just have a look at this one. This one should be reasonably straightforward, but... Either way, I want to take off this um, BGA here. There we go. So, yeah, just a, a really big BGA and really good weight. A lot of this plasticky stuff. So... Hopefully we've got some good gold bonding wires there. All right, that's that. So there is another BGA here, but I, I, I want to be careful not to uh, remove too much off here so we can at, at least get mid-grade. So I'll take off the tantalums at the front here. One black, one yellow and the gold band crystal oscillator um, for me it doesn't matter what boards they are i always at least take the gold band crystal sometimes a lot of boards that's all i take off um, so i can get these two black tantalum capacitors off the back here okay so we're still speculating on tantalum uh, it is a conflict metal, so one day, hopefully, tantalum shoots up in value. 
<laughs> um, I can leave this uh, little little uh, drive card in there and we'll, we can just call this a mid, good mid-grade board um, probably should be taking off this bracket but it's aluminium so it's not that heavy in weight still has a good BGA so I'm going to call that a mid-grade board that's all I want to do okay so another well we've got a slot card here um, in this case I kind of want to keep it as a slot card but it's this would well it, it would actually go as a almost like a, a server type a server grade slot card if you like um, as it is pretty close but all I want here well I might as well take off all the tantalum capacitors okay so like I said this style of depopulating is um, is my style uh, so it's a cross between going for precious metal recovery items but trying to keep as much value on it to be able to sell the boards um, for a, a reasonable value so they're all our nice tantalum capacitors beautiful okay so we've still got a, a pretty good board here um, in this case yeah what I think I'm going to do here just for uh, the video's sake and everything is I'll bring this down to a mid-grade board and so then what we can do is if we're going mid-grade I'm going to take off the gold fingers right and I find just this method of taking off gold fingers is just the easiest way as you as you go along you know um, ideally you don't let your uh, stuff to depopulate build up too much um, you just do it as you go so okay so we're getting uh, we're getting there now so obviously four chips for a mid-grade is way too much so for a start at least I want to grab two of these chips flat packs nice actually got quite good weight on these all right so that's looking better and here I've got the option of maybe removing a couple of these ones or removing this large one. I'd rather have the larger one, but um, yeah, let's see. Let me think here. We've got a couple of small ICs, so this part's fine. I think I'll get the bigger one. Bigger the better. Okay. Zynix. All right, and we could probably pinch one of these. It's still pretty good for a mid-grade, so get another one. <laughs> and remember, these things here, these chunky things, usually really close to the ports, they've just got copper coils in there, so no value there whatsoever, um, precious metal-wise anyway. So, okay, I'm pretty happy with that. Now, the only thing now is uh, this is the thing you've you, you've got to sacrifice is now that we've turned this into a mid-grade board, we've taken off the gold fingers. Uh, even if we just took off the gold fingers and, and a regular board and sent it off to mid-grade, we have to now take off this steel bracket. So, they're the things you just got to weigh up. Um, even though we, we haven't lost a lot of weight here because these runs are only very light um, but still we can still get clean pressing steel for it and there we go we've got our mid-grade board and it's still a good mid-grade board so they'll get still good get good value for what it is okay um, let's do a slightly bigger board Okay, so we've got these boards here and this is uh, one of those funny things where um, people bring me these boards and they, they think they're going to be worth a fortune because uh, you can see all the gold, you know, under all this blue is this gold flashed, the whole board is flashed. 
So if we turn it around, you can see this whole board is gold flashing. And sure, it's gold and we can get gold recovery, but it's, it's only a flashing, it's not a gold plating. Um, it's just less. In this case, because these are, this flashing is really orange. So um, what that means is that there's more gold content in this flashing than in another type of flashing. So, you, you know, sometimes you get uh, gold fingers. Well, not, uh, it's probably a bad example, but um, other boards will have gold flashing and it's uh, really, really uh, bright gold flashing. Uh, so <laughs> make no mistake, the, uh, the large refiners, they'll still get this gold and, um, you know, there's a, a lot of floor space here of uh, good clean gold. And underneath this mask, this blue, it's going to be the same thing. So there is still gold, good gold recovery, but it's it's just not like it's not like gold plating like like this stuff. Okay, just the uh, yeah, hard to explain, but you get my drift. So here, obviously, we could kind of sell this as it's not really. It looks like it's a, a super high grade board, and it should be like a telecom. And some buyers will probably buy this as a telecom board. Again, I don't sell telecom boards, so I always try and bring it down to a server grade board. So in this case, I'm looking at, well, what, what kind of value can I, I get out of this? Now, there's a gold band crystal oscillator or two. So they're my first point of call. Okay, so this is a good example where um, the... Uh, the cap of the uh, crystal oscillator has snapped off because sometimes the uh, ceramics are really tight on the board. Um, so you can see here's the cap here and all we've got here is just the gold band. So we still keep it because it does have that gold band and uh, virtually no, no ceramic left on it, just a little bit around these that's stuck on the edge there. So, but we still keep that as part of it. And you can see there's a nice gold tab and the ceramic with the gold bonding wires in there. So some of it's still there. So I can stick my finger there. And there's a little piece of ceramic with you can see the little bits of gold there. So that's the most important part. You don't want to lose all that sort of stuff. And Let me just uh, try and get this tab. So there's a nice piece of uh, gold in there. And this is good gold. And so there's a little bit of ceramic left. Crack that off. Okay, you can see it's all gold in there. That's, that's the stuff. And uh, yeah, by kilo or by weight, as good as any ceramic CPU. So there's two more here. So these ones are on really tight. Okay, got a almost a clean extraction there. Just a little bit of brokenness and I've got that piece too. And one more up here. So you just kind of got to push down and twist the screwdriver at the same time. We've got most of it. There's Oh. Some stuck. There we go. All right. Oh. There's another one there. So obviously this process is it seems slow. It's a, it's a lot quicker when I'm not um, doing it on video, obviously. Um, now I've done quite a lot of these boards, so I'm quite used to it, of what to sort of uh, take off these boards. Now, as you can see, we're, we've got these uh, copper top, copper all aluminium top BGAs. We've got a couple of clean BGAs here. So we want to bring this down to server grade. So if I just took one of these BGAs, you know, it kind of looks a bit too obvious, but we might get away with just taking one 
okay so we've got a nice high value Ericsson BGA okay so it still looks okay and then I'll all I'll do is pinch some of these tantalum capacitors don't have to get all of them uh, because a buyer will has gone through a lot of boards knows knows what boards look like and tantalum capacitors are, are kind of expected on on higher grade boards anyway um, and the only thing is we've got these little jacks all these gold-plated jacks now if they come off reasonably easy I'll, I'll take them if not I'll just move on to the next board there all right so fully plated gold jacks and they're actually a good plating on these jacks once again a deep orange got some rubbish on the end there so try and remove as many as I can sort of get to again don't have to get every one of them leave a, a little bit just to sort of make it look reasonable all right so I'll take them just to get a little bit of extra value for myself the other side obviously it's nothing there and yeah it's still an impressive board you can't really you know I mean if you, I look at it I'll say yep yeah, I can see a, a BGA has been taken off so straight away I wouldn't consider this I wouldn't pay server grade board for it even though it still has quite a lot of chips uh, not really much rubbish it does have like a copper transformer here and and some copper coils and stuff there and probably the only other thing is maybe just pinch a few MLCCs from around the traps uh, whether they're palladium MLCCs or or not doesn't matter um, we'll work that out it's where there's a, a nice cluster of MLCCs all right I'm happy with that still it's still a great board still impressive server grade board now I might have paid telecom grade board so I'm devaluing it bringing it down it's it's not a great deal of difference it's only like about 40 or 50 cents a kilo here between server grade and telecom grade but so um, you know but I'm getting a little bit of value by getting my chip and a couple of bits and pieces all right that was that one here's another version a green one um, again quite a impressive board once again fully flashed back nice and again under this green mask will be all this flashing and uh, so here we've got uh, well it's close to a telecom grade board I don't know whether I I bought this or pulled this out myself um, but it does have these um, transformer things here so it's quite a lot of dead weight here on this side so got to be wary of that does have some really nice gold pins here um, take that into account some really nice gold plated uh, jacks here so these these jacks here I want not going to uh, really notice them missing and straight up we've got some nice very nice gold plated jacks um, but again it's only gold plated and a lot of the, most of the weight is in the material so um, but we do have now here we've got gold band crystal oscillators but they're really long how's them two of them there and another nice chunky one here so um, you know easy to miss if you're just looking at a board like this okay so we've removed the cap got a little bit of um, ceramic left there you can see the gold band around the edge get rid of that and I'll show you the you can see there's a little die in there but it's I can also see a lot of gold plating underneath the die little 
tiny gold bonding wires. So we want all this, including the die. And we want to Okay, so you can see the yellow die there, but um, all the little bits of gold on the ceramic as well. So we want to keep all that. And I just throw it in my little tub there. So in this, I'll just let the little components settle. So in all these, sure we've got, a, most of them are all complete, all in good, but I you know, always got to remember that at the base of this is going to be a whole lot of crumble that is going to be um, a lot of quite a bit of gold there built up. So once once this um, little container that I use gets close to full, that's when I'll, I'll tip it into my main stash. All right, so we've got one. Get these two more. This one up here. Yeah, really hard, these long ones to get complete. This one, I've got more ceramic on it. This one's only a little bit, but we keep the whole lot. And so, dye, ceramic. A whole lot. These are really stuck on hard. So just try and get as much as you can. doesn't want to budge at least the die is cracking up but we want all that base okay all right so this this is the base underneath the die and you can see it's a whole plate of gold plating there that's the real good stuff. So I don't want to lose that bit. And so all I can do here, all different little tiny little speck crumbles. It's all the good stuff. All right, now a little bit left because it's such good gold. I want to, you know, get it because even that little tiny bit was uh, probably makes up for a handful of pins. All right, so here we go. Let's, uh, you know, bring this down to um, acceptable server grade level. So this one right on the end here, this flat pack, we want that. Um, I'll probably get another one. Okay, still not too bad. We can, um, yeah, because it doesn't have much here. Um, whatever was on here, these big modules, these have been taken off. So, and they've probably, someone probably sold me this board and they've taken off these heavy modules. So there's not as much rubbish. So they could have got um, serve a uh, telecom grade for it you see so i'm happy to pay telecom if it's a telecom grade board even though i don't sell telecom this is what i do so here we've got a whole heap of uh, ml uh mlc tantalum capacitors now in this case there's no markings of c but i can see that they're tantalum capacitors and they don't have to have the positive symbol like like on the yellow ones yellow ones don't have positive symbol the black ones don't have to have positive symbol if they're capacitors and they look like that, then they're tantalum capacitors. So, yeah, I see some people sort of trying to differentiate between um, black tantalum capacitors with um, positive symbols and ones without. Well, they're probably only doing that because some look like inductors. So if they're marked as an L, then they're definitely inductors, so that's when you leave them. But uh, if they're marked as C, or you know what you're looking at, then they're definitely always tantalum capacitors. 
Um, yeah, don't want to take off too much more, even though it's got gold flashing and it's got great pins here. I'd probably like to take these pins off. It's not going to affect the board. Um, I think they're going to be really good high quality. I can see the good high quality pins. So all I want to do, just sim quite simple. Right. And I can just see underneath there, they're really nice gold plated pins. High, you know, one of the highest grade that we can get in modern days. So I'll keep that. And it doesn't really take much off the board. Also got gold pins here. I'll just leave these ones on there. And I'm happy with that. Um, could even probably pinch another flat pack, but I'll just leave this as a server grade. Get my value there. All right. So now we'll, we'll go down to a, a step where this is, uh, well, it's probably, who knows, might have been off a, uh, I think uh, from a LCD TV. So it's basically just a mid-grade board, uh, except it's one step higher, a little bit higher um, than what is really expected from a mid-grade board. So it's got, because it's got two BGAs here, so... I'm going to take one of the BGAs. There we go. It's really easy. There's our little caps. Nice. And the BGA. And there we go. And so, as you can see, it's still a mid-grade board. No dramas there. It does have a few, some big MLCs here I can take. It's not going to devalue it. Generally, MLCCs, removing them, don't really devalue uh, a board much um, at all. And so on a mid-grade board, I don't bother taking these crystals off. They're only silver recovery. And, you know, usually I take them off just low-grade boards. Um, but, uh, I mean, you can... These ones are, are quite high, so I can get one. See how they're nice and tall. I always remove the little pin on the on the back and the little plastic bit. I like my crystals to be clean, ready to go. So we've still got a good quality mid-grade board. And even so much so that I can pinch also a memory IC chip. Okay. So once again, if you're purely in for, you don't have anywhere to sell your boards, then you want to depopulate all the good things and you can even, you know, you can sell it, your chips and stuff on places like eBay um, or you can even sell them to me if you're uh, nearby. It's worth sell sending me these by the kilo. It's certainly not worth posting complete boards. Okay, so here got quite a few of these kind of boards um, this one had a it's already had the uh, EEPROM removed so this thing here is just a copper coil thing we don't want to touch that basically a mid-grade board but just a little bit too much on it as usual um, here's a capacitor that might might be a tantalum not sure I'd rather just leave it so I can see tantalum capacitors here, the nice resin dipped ones. I'll take them and a couple of tiny little tantalum capacitors. Because it's just a mid-grade board, I'd rather just take the tantalum capacitors off, get much better value. And these resin dipped tantalums, I just pluck them off like so. There we go four nice resin dip tantalums okay so they're out the way you don't even notice that they're missing so now <coughs> what can I do to um, you know get some value for myself and still keep it as a mid-grade board so I remove this flat pack I'm going to remove some of these ICs on this side and I think it'll still look good as a as a mid-grade board Okay, so these ICs, just get a good grip on them, and I just 
usually just twist them off. So I think I can get all of these long ones. There we go, flat pack and a whole bunch of ICs. Nice. And look at that, we've still got a good board. So these, these uh, ICs are quite flat. A um, little bit harder to remove. But you sort of just got to get a little grip and, and twist them. So I can get away with doing a bit of that. Okay, a few more tiny little bonus. And there we go, we still got a good mid-grade board. They've got good gold pins here, they'll get their value. All these gold pins here, really nice high quality. If I had my, um, my air gun out and if I was able to get to my compressor, it's, it's a bit, it's impossible. Um, I'd take off these beautiful gold pins as well. They're super. So um, the buyer and yeah, they're all over the place, gold pins. So the buyer is going to get really good value off these gold pins. So no worries about depopulating. It's a very similar board. Here's the EEPROM that was missing on the last one. So what I do, I skim off the sticker and I just want to look at the center. And in this case, I can see, you won't be able to see it in the camera, but I can see um, the bonding wires are gold. So it's a gold one. Most of the time, usually about 95% of the time, the bonding wires are only silver. Um, so in this case, I definitely take it. And a lot of times I'll take the silver ones too, but sometimes if I, I'm tr I'd rather take off IC chips and leave a silver BG, uh, silver EEPROM on. So I'll do the same thing here. The flat pack, the row of uh, ICs along the side here. Same, pretty much the same board. So here's a, a very mid-grade board. Uh, I kind of don't really want to even touch this one. If it had the chips here, then I'd, you know, remove. Um, but yeah, I don't really... All I'll do here is I'll just take off a little flat pack. And that's it. In this case, I'd, even though it does have a nice BGA, I don't want to devalue it too much. So here we've got some really fat resin dip tantalum capacitors. So these are, are, are excellent for uh, tantalum and silver. So I want them and they're not going to change the value on the board. Okay, so if you take a few tantalums off, it's not going to make much difference. So these are awesome, really heavy weight. Now, so we've got a removable IC chip, and because it's removable, it's not an EEPROM, but it's an easy extraction. We can just take it off. Awesome. Not every, you know, you'll find boards like there was, there's a socket where it didn't have a, a, a um, IC chip. So, you know, buyers expect that they're going to be sockets empty. Uh, there's a, another tantalum capacitor, nice big one. Uh, tiny ones, I, I don't worry that much. And we've got all these little blue MLCCs. See these little blue resin dipped? So you can see the coding is C6, C5, C4. So C stands for capacitor. These are capacitors, but they're also MLCCs. And apparently these blue ones are, are really good for MLCC recovery. You want to keep them separate, obviously, from your regular MLCCs. So I have a little, little working tub. You can see some yellow ones and blue ones. And uh, these ones are really close to the IC chips, so they're a little bit harder. If you wanted to spend the time trying to get them all, it's not going to really devalue the board, but they are good for, you know, and pretty good. Most likely, these are, are, are palladium ones. So you can, uh, at least where, you know, you're more sure of the, the content of these MLCCs. 
as opposed to the other ones where a lot these days won't have palladium. So, and well, palladium is, you know, so much more than it used to be. You know, it's, <laughs> who would have thought that it was going to be a, you know, like nearly a thousand dollars more an ounce than gold. Uh, incredible. But that's how it is. And uh, But same with gold, same with silver. Don't be surprised if things change dramatically and uh, where it gets to the point where until unless buyers are, you know, refiners are paying super good prices, you know, eventually it might just be worth depopulating every circuit board and not selling anything to anyone else. Okay, so they're all the easy ones. Uh, the rest are just too close to the ICs. But so what I'm trying to do here, I mean, this is almost telecom grade board because it doesn't have rubbish and it's all IC chips. I can go either way. Um, but these ICs here are actually ceramic as opposed to the plastics. So instead, I'll probably just go for these ceramic ICs. I think they're... They might, uh, I think they're ceramic top and plastic base. They look like, yeah, they're layered. We'll just have a little look. Yeah, definitely ceramic, but sometimes, look, if there's no gold visible, then it could be anything in there. And so I can't really see any gold. So I'll probably just leave this, and I'm going to throw this into server grade board and be done with it. I got a few tantalums. Can't make every post a winner, you know, when you're um, partially depopulating. Uh, now here, well, it's close to, again, it doesn't have any real dead weight rubbish. So we're getting close to server grade here. But I'd probably say more, uh, sorry, a uh, telecom grade, but I'd say more of a server grade. Um... Yeah, like I said, it's not not every board is easily gradable, but I definitely remove the removable IC, nice and easy. And that uh, uh, might be plastic. Okay, so here, okay, so I'm going to throw this into obviously server grade board. Um, so how can I get some value here? I'll just see if I can take off some of these large ICs. Okay, so, well, save me doing it. You can see all that wire, it's silvery colour, so it could be silver, it could be platinum, it could be tin. Um, so I can't see visible gold, so, you know, what's the point of grabbing them? I mean, I can, you can grab them and just put them in ICs and you know, ICs will sell on their own, sell for more than the board sells for. So, you know, and people don't know, you know, you don't know what's in an IC until you start processing them all. No one's going to sit there and crack everyone open. But, um, so you can do that. For me, I'm just happy to sell this as a server, uh, telecom grade, uh, sorry, server grade board. But what I will do, we've been through the big ones and established there's nothing... Uh, for for a small refiner Really so we'll get a few IC chips smaller ones Try not to devalue the board Get one more All right, so I'm happy with that nice, and I'm happy to just send this off as a Server grade board, okay, so these ones are starting to get a bit technical because Here's the double height ports here. There is, you know, there is tiny little gold pins in here, but it's all dead weight. This is steel. These pulse things, again, that's just copper coils. So virtually blank here. Definitely not a telecom grade board, even though it's a telecom board. It's not a telecom grade. <sighs> Barely a server grade, to, to be honest. So we don't want to touch anything here. We want to keep it at least as a server grade board. The only thing we got, we, I will get are 
the gold band crystal oscillators like I always do. So there's two on this board. I'll grab them two and we'll see what else we can get. So nice, easy, clean extractions. So these boards are just sort of in and out just to remove a couple of crystal oscillators. Other side, there's really nothing. Tiny MLCCs, we'll leave all that. Okay, but there is a nice row of MLCCs along the top here. And so these really won't be missed. So you can just kind of skim your screwdriver along. Get my tub. And just tip them in. There you go. So you can't tell that there's MLCCs missing. You can't tell that there's two gold band crystal oscillators really missing. But... I don't want to take off anything else because it would just devalue the board, you know, and we want to keep it at least as a server grade board. And this is just on the edge. Um, because of this dead weight, you know, 60% of the weight is all in here. So you can't expect much there. So that's just what you've got to do. You, you've got to just uh, try and... Uh, you know, balance things out and, you know, try not to be too greedy with stuff. And here's another board that, you know, technically it could probably go as a, a motherboard, to be honest, uh, because it's better than a motherboard. Um, technically it should probably go as a serve grade board, but I'm going to take this down to a mid-grade board because I want this huge AMD chip again. I'll also take this BGA, so these two BGAs for gold recovery are going to be beautiful. I'll take the tantalums, gold band crystal, and we've still got a good mid-grade board. In this case, I'll even just leave this, this card in there, a bit of extra weight. So, as you can see, it's a tedious process, and it's a lot easier if you're straight, straight out gold recovery, you know, precious metal recovery type. You're not selling your boards, you're just, you're just depopulating completely, then it's straightforward. You're just going for everything that's got something in it. <laughs> and uh, whether you're going to process it yourself or sell the components, it doesn't matter. Uh, I pref you know, you're probably better off just stockpiling them, uh, not try and uh, be in a hurry to sell your stuff and uh, let the price of precious, precious metals um, sort of like make you the money, you know, wait for gold and silver to maybe one day go sky high and then you're sitting on a really nice little thing there. So because now we've got this dead weight, we've taken off quite a bit, but there's still like four memory ICs, there's three big flat packs here, uh, some tiny little, so there's good stuff still here um, that justifies it being a mid-grade board. So we can still get just mid-grade board. Um, okay, another good example here of one of these uh, Cisco router switch type boards. Um, they look impressive, you think, oh wow, you know, but again, too much dead weight, all this is dead weight, so it looks like it's part of the circuit board, oh yeah, there's all IC chips, they're not ICs, copper coils, so what do we got? We've only got this bottom section here, all this is rubbish, so as it is, mm, yeah, would get close to being a you know, would throw this into, you know, server grade or whatever grade you got that's below telecom grade um, or you could call it a, a, a very high grade board but not nothing like telecom. So we've got a BGA under there, BGA here, all good. We don't want to touch all this. We want to keep this as a server grade board. But again, we've got two gold band crystals and three tantalums. That's all I'll take on this side. So it's not even going to be noticeable. And there we go. Nice, two gold bands, three tanties. And if you do this as you're getting boards, 
then the job is a lot easier. So I'm not going to touch these MLCCs. I don't want to devalue this side, but over here you can see there's a whole really nice row of MLCCs. And in this case, they're going crossways, so I want to go this way. And I pop each one of these ones off individually because they're, they're mounted side by side, so you can't just skim your uh, screwdriver along, otherwise too many too many will crunch or uh, you know crush up and it doesn't matter if you crush your MLCCs up a bit um, you know you, every batch of MLCCs you got you know everyone expects there to be crumble and that crumble is just as good as any that's why I have quite a wide tub for MLCCs so when I'm when I skim off boards I can get everything including the crumble that's stuck on and we've still got a server grade board not telecom um, even though it comes from a telecom system because there's just not enough on it and too much weight dead weight <laughs> uh, okay so um, yeah uh, you know geez it's hard to know where to start oh actually I, I just went to the scrapyard uh, to get a couple of price checks and they gave me a, a, a gift. I got a um, 2021 diary and their logo printed in there, Manhari. And they also gave me this uh, copper bottle. <sighs> so, pure copper water bottle. Um, a metal that induces energy Good luck for love and money refreshes <laughs> the mind and body. Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, so there we go. They made the, got their own copper bottles, Manhari Metals. Benefits of copper water helps kill bacteria, regulate, regulate thyroid function, reduce arthritis pain, digestive system, slow down aging, beat anemia, helps heal wounds faster. Well, I don't know. There's probably no scientific fact about that, but still, let's have a look. Nice. Copper. Oh, well, I can always send it back to them and sell it to them as uh, <laughs> candy copper. But still, nice to get something from your scrapyard, you know. Um... A bit of a gift, especially since it's uh, uh, they've got their own Manhari medals engraved in it, uh, even on top. How's that? Ah, there you go. It's just a copper water bottle. When I go street scrapping in a couple of weeks, I'll put my water in there. Uh, apparently, I think when it comes to trying to get any benefits from it, I think it's got to sit in the... The water has to sit in there for like at least 24 hours. But I think it's got more about the bacterial qualities rather than anything. And... Uh, I've seen a lot of them kind of things in India and I can understand because, you know, in India the, the water is not r really drinkable and so that's probably how they disinfect some of their water. You store it in there tw uh, 24 hours, 48 hours and it probably removes some of the bacteria. Um, I think that's traditionally one of the main reasons why they they did that this one it's a different one okay so again dual socket so it's server grade motherboard looks like there's a nice bga under there not going to touch that gold band crystal tanty i'm in this case because it's quite good populated i will take this bga just got to look under this see this uh little rubber cover a little hidden battery 
got to remove the battery. Not fair to have leave batteries on there. And uh, some people ask me, why do you have to remove the battery? It's because when they put these through shredders, lithium batteries, when they go through shredders, they can explode. They make little spot fires. And, um, you know, they've obviously got to, you know, turn the fire, you know, extinguish the fire as they, um, as they go. So, um, that's mostly why they, they need lithium batteries separate because, uh, however they process them, I don't know normally, but obviously then they would be expecting fires and stuff. But when they're processing, uh, motherboards, they don't want spot fires happening and little explosions happening in their uh, in their shred. So there we go. You can't notice any different. We did take a good BGA and we've still got a good server grade motherboard. So your buyer, you know, there's MLCCs again under the CPU, couple of rows. So just for the hell of it. I'll skim off as many as I can. I don't always go for for all the MLCCs. There we go. And there's still a couple of rows this way. I'll leave them. You still want to leave good value. And like I said, you look at this board and, yep, it's just a server motherboard. You don't really notice anything missing. And, you know, one BGA missing on in this case um, it's fine because sometimes people, uh, there'll be a heatsink on the BGA and the heatsink can get knocked off and the BGA sticks to the heatsink. So uh, there's still a couple of BGAs there. That was a, a nice one. And here's a pretty awesome board. Wow. So this, well, you'd have to give this telecom grade. Uh, uh, obviously, you've got to remove it off this backing. <laughs> um, yeah, but other than that, it's uh, look at it. You know, you can see it's it's just once we remove the backing and this side panel here, it's all stuff, good stuff. There's very little rubbish. Um, you know, maybe here you got you know a bit of dead weight on this side, but you know that's to you know every board's going to have a bit of dead weight. But, um, gosh, you can just see all these chips, you know, it's, it's definitely telecom. So if someone brought me this board, I would definitely pay good telecom grade for it. And not every board I pay just what the grade is. Sometimes if there's, if they're super boards, then I don't do it by weight. Like I'll weigh it to see what it would be worth at the highest level. And then I'll, I'll say, you know, so I'll say, okay, I'll weigh this up. Okay, as a telecom grade board, I'll pay, you know, what, what it might be uh, um, $20, right? But then, you know, I might look at a board and say, okay, well, it's $20 by weight as a telecom grade, but I'll give you $30 or $35 or, or $80 if it's all these chips were gold capped. It could be $200, you know, it just depends on what's on it. Whereas uh, my buyer wouldn't do that. They'll just you know, um, because I don't sell telecom grade, you know, it would just go as uh, server grade and, you know, and it's just like hit and miss. Some, some would be good, some, it balances out, you know, for, for the larger buyers. But in this case, it's just, um, it's too awesome to even, um, yeah, just got to start depopulating, start removing good stuff and then just work out what it's going to be in the end. It, for me, this kind of board doesn't really matter. Uh, what and I do with it because I'll probably get good stuff, good gold recovery. I can see these EPROMs here are super, in, as far as uh, the gold bonding wires are just intense. There's just so much of it. It's loaded ceramic and I can just see the gold in there. They're, they're as good as they the EPROMs get. So first we want both of these EPROMs. Don't know if you can see it, but I mean, the die in the center is like silvery, but it's it's not about the die. It's around the outside. All the bonding wires are all pure gold, and they run right through this ceramic to all the legs. So, 
Um, two beautiful EEPROMs. Fantastic, so straight off the bat. We've got all these IC chips here, removable, and then there's a lot of non-removable. So I'll just, so what I'll do, in this case, I will remove the removables, and we'll just see what that, what it looks like at the end. And uh, because even as a telecom grade board, I see chips on their own are still worth uh, almost almost double. So I'll just continue doing all these removables. Looking good. And all these ones here. Yeah, a lot of them are ceramic, so or ceramic tops at least. Okay, so here I can't see any. There's no visible gold, right? So this is the thing. You know, everyone keeps saying, "Oh, it's tin and could be aluminium." You know, I I just don't understand why it would be tin or aluminium when it doesn't really conduct very, you know, nothing like silver, wood, or even copper, uh, and especially gold, then why would they use, they go from some C, uh, IC chips, they would go from gold to then going to right down to tin or aluminium. Um, but one day, I suppose I'll find out myself for sure when I, you know, start looking into gold recovery and um, I'll do a whole batch of CPUs that don't show gold and we'll just go for, you know, other metals, whatever's in there, or I'll try and bring it down to a one piece metal where I can um, take take it into a a bullion dealer and get them to XRF it and tell me exactly what what metals I've got in there and then I'll know for sure because there's so many conflicting th things. Some people are. You know, so convinced that it's aluminium. Some are convinced it's tin. Some say, yeah, it's most likely silver. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> so, I just find it really strange that they go from gold all the way down to tin. Why not silver? I mean, silver's not that expensive. All right, so I've gotten all the removable IC chips that I can see and that's pretty darn good hey uh, a good handful of ceramic CPUs uh, ICs I'll put them away now um, a couple of things that I want here are these Zoran removable flat packs And a Xilinx. So these ones are usually nice and chunky. So good, good flat pack weight. Okay. So now, as you can see, the board still looks pretty okay. Um, a lot of the chips have been removed, obviously, but there still are a lot of onboard IC chips. We're certainly nowhere near telecom grade now. Um, but now we've got all these tantalum capacitors, resin dipped, and they're really nice and chunky. And these two orange ones are a super size. So again, this is, uh, so I'm just going by what I see as, you know, well worth while and what happens at the end, what we end up with. Um, is what we end up with. 
I'm not particularly fussed about dropping the value a lot or like already at this stage you'll be uh, just yeah very close to dropping it under server grade board so if you were to do this and send it to me or to another buyer you you know you might get disappointed in the end and now that we're removing all these tantalum capacitors um, we're going to step it down but like I said if you're uh, you know going for this then you're getting your value in what you're removing like look at all these really nice uh, good weight tantalum capacitors I try and keep the resin ones, di uh, resin dipped ones, separate, mostly, just so it later on when I go to sort them all out, um, it doesn't take me that long. Sometimes it can take an hour to sort out my tub of <laughs> MLCCs because I do like to separate them. Um, yeah, but there's stacks on here. I mean, there's probably close to close to a pound probably because uh, they are heavy little buggers these ones and they've got good tantalum content because these are the older school or, and pretty high-end tantalum capacitors look at all these just heaps so yeah, if this board was all removable IC chips, th uh, then I'd probably just do that, remove them all and just turn the board into virtually a, a nothing board, just scrap steel. Um, speaking of scrap steel, I had to wait for these batteries to uh, recharge. Um, I thought with this new GoPro, I thought I could just put in the older batteries like you could always could. But now they've changed the batteries where they're uh, a lot bigger. So I can't use the GoPro 8 batteries in this. And I had a whole heap charged up. And so I had to wait some time before I could uh, come back to this video. So what I did was I loaded up the van with uh, just dirty scrap steel. And I took it in, got rid of it. So that's just another job out the way that had to be done. Um, for the day so that's awesome all right so tantalum capacitor's gone now what do we got here well oh there's a couple more tantalums here if i can get them get one more okay so now we've got all those little blue mlccs and so um, they're so small, but they're, they're good value, but they're, they just take, uh, they're really hard to get to because they're in between IC chips. And so I just grab a few, so I'm not leaving all of them on there, but yeah, they're just too small and hard, but if you uh, if you got the time, these are certainly good value. And and mind you, you know we're going for gold recovery, but this is palladium recovery. And you know, well, it's it's worth uh, palladium's worth a lot more than gold. So it's certainly uh, good stuff. And I can't see palladium going any cheaper anymore. Um, I think we're stuck to it it's just a matter of whether gold can uh, eventually catch up and I, I think it will um, based on you know palladium is more based on supply and demand obviously its uses and whereas you know gold is a, a mixture it's it's basically money and once the Federal Reserves of the world uh, can no longer keep up with manipulating the whole system, 
Um, I was just watching something, a uh, video earlier on today about, I think it's uh, Arkansas, Arkansas in America, something like that. They've put in a bill to make um, gold and silver uh, money again, where you can actually use gold and silver as currency to buy things. Um, they've got to get this bill going to go through to to make it possible so um, it's not taxed whereas at the moment it would be taxed the way the the laws work something like that so that could well be the start of something that uh, you know precious metal stackers have been waiting for for a long time is for uh, countries to start recognizing a, a gold and silver as what it is as tr true money and you know sort of going against the grain and not allowing the Federal Reserve to um, you know dictate prices and value and just print money cheap money from thin air uh, I think a lot of people would be, you know, I don't think uh, many people actually realise that, like, say, the US Federal Reserve, a lot of people think that that's, it's, because it sounds federal, it sounds like it's a government thing. Um, the US Federal Reserve is a, is a private company. It's, it's not owned by the government. The government actually buys money you know, paper money off the Federal Reserve. And the Federal Reserve charge, like, a small percentage for every dollar. But on top of that, it's borrowed. So the US government borrow, like, they need, say, they want to put a trillion dollars into circulation. They borrow that money off the Federal Reserve, and they got to not only... Uh, pay a little bit more for it but they've got to pay interest on that money oh it's crazy it's just absolutely ridiculous and so so people might think oh yeah the federal reserve you know it's oh the government you know it's federal reserve is owned by you know private companies started up by like you know the rothschild dynasty and yeah basically uh, it's all a sham, I think. All right, so you know what? Um, I've taken off quite a lot of the little MLCCs, all my tantalums. I've taken all the removable ICs, including the two big flat packs. Um, all I'm going to do here is just remove this back plane. I'm going to still keep this as I think I can still get away with this being a server grade board. Uh, because there's still a lot of uh, precious metal recovery on this board. It's still a good board, so I haven't really uh, devalued it too much. And if I can work out how to get this plastic back plane off, we'll be in business. All right. So this, okay. It's mostly aluminium, so I shall deal with that. That came from the shelf. All right, so yeah, as you can see, it's still a good board. It's still loaded. Even the sockets have got gold in the socket, so it's still a loaded board. It's certainly no longer a telecom board, but it's a uh, it's still good enough for server grade. Here's an EEPROM. Um, might as well grab that. Uh, it looks like it's silvery, so, all right. So I haven't done a great deal, but I suppose just uh, talking and stuff. Oh, and this one, this was recently that I scrapped, and I think I mentioned, um, yeah, yeah, this was very recent. Uh, came out of that medical, uh, the um, nuclear analyzer. 
So what I uh, think I decided to do when I was looking at it is removing all these flat packs, okay, the removable ones, and I reckon these will be pretty awesome, you know. So I'll get quite a lot here. Um, as it is, it was a telecom grade board, but once again, I don't sell telecom grade, so I bring it down to server. So my uh, idea on this board was to remove all these removable flat packs, and we'll see what we end up with after that, how it looks. If it doesn't quite make server grade, then I'll bring it right down to mid-grade. I, I don't mind. I'm getting the value from the potential gold recovery down the track, so. Okay, so here we go. Okay, so we've done all that. Now we've still got a lot of, it's still a good server grade board. And I did mention when I scrapped this that these are all resistor networks. You can see the code RP11. So when it's R, R stands for it. resistor. These are resistor networks. They look like tantalums, but they're not. There's a little tantalum there, but that's, uh, there's only a couple around. So here, um, these RAM chips, you know what, uh, if you were to sell as RAM, because these are tin RAM, they're not gold, so you would actually get more leaving it on as a server board. But for me, if you and for you, if you're doing, uh, you're removing IC chips, because IC chips do sell for um, still almost twice as much as a, a server grade. So even though these are single-sided, these IC chips, uh, uh, for me, a good value. So instead of leaving it on the board and getting server grade board, I'll just roughly <laughs> remove these six RAM sticks and I'll take off all the uh, ICs off them. And there we go. So we've still got a server grade board uh, because there's no rubbish, there's, you know, there's no copper coils, there's no dead weight. You know, we've still got a couple of tiny flat packs we'll leave in there, but it's still got enough flat packs around to uh, justify it being a server grade board. If it, if it had some rubbish, some copper coils and stuff, we're getting close to mid grade then. And then you could probably take off a couple of more, but I'm just going to leave it like that and be happy to get server grade board. And... Um, happy with all my chips, and then these little RAM memory ICs, they come off really easy, they're nice and chunky, but I don't put these with the, the regular, the current style um, memory ICs, like these ones, they're really flat, right? I keep these separate, I just put these ones in with IC chips just stand even though they're memory ic these are the chunky ones i just put them with ic chips and be done with it and then on these ones in particular uh you notice that under each uh ic chip there was a little mlcc and these will probably be good mlccs because they're they're quite uh vintage so i'll do that with them these ones i don't i'll leave these chunky ones on and there's also thin ones on the ram because it's gold ram I'd rather have these as RAM. Whether I sell the RAM or depopulate is another thing. Um, yeah, so there you go. Um, I didn't want this video to go too long. Like I said, I didn't want a huge uh, video file. Uh, so I'll probably just leave it at that. I don't know how long it's how long this video has gone for, but I think it's long enough for now. And um, oh, here's another one of those boards. Awesome. So the one, oh, oh, that's right. So that one that I just did, I think I kept this one as a um, as an actual sample um, display sample uh, for a while until I work out what I want to do. But remember the board that I did just before, the, the telecom grey board took all the removable ICs. This one's a little bit different. It's got less removable ICs. Uh, all these ones that I not, took off, they were uh, removable. In this case, it's on board. Um, so I do like this board. It's a slightly different uh, daughter card on top. It's got a nice 
uh, EEPROM here and those two really good gold EEPROMs down the bottom here but I'm not going to take off the stickers yet I just want to keep this one um, it might just be a good display and the reason mostly why is don't know if you guys remember the TRW look at the size of that gold IC chip um, I've got one inside that I removed off the last one and I've kept this one on just because it looks awesome. Look at a gold cap, gold legs. It's sort of almost like a Motorola CPU, uh, ceramic, awesome gold recovery. I freaked out when I got these ones. I couldn't believe it. So uh, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to keep this board, this one, just as uh, in my collection as a, a potential future display. I better keep uh, scrapping here, keep depopulating, and uh, just shorten up this video. Hope that was a bit of fun for you. And uh, yeah, look out for uh, other videos coming up. Like I said, I might do a part two of this. We'll just see how we go. And uh, street scrapping in two weeks. Can't wait. That's going to be awesome. I've been pretty busy. I've been doing a few pickups, but nothing um, different or exciting. So just plodding along. But uh, that's how it is in the uh, scrap world. And um, look out for other scrappers on YouTube and Odyssey and so on. Um, try and support the, uh, the niche and, uh, yeah, give everyone a bit of support and it'll be awesome. All right, guys, catch you next time.